worked for Mitzi Rosland, and she was at our client party, and um, this conversation came up, and they said, oh, you need to come and do um, our lunchtime talks. So, so that's where this all came from. So the picture you're seeing here was the, um, the, one of the original stores and uh, post office. Um, there were several stores along the, the um, life of the town of Silver Bow. This picture is where Silver Bow is currently located um, and is across the street and, and towards the track from uh, the house that I grew up in and my sister who was sitting in the corner back there. Um, so this, this little store, and you can see their house right next to it there. Um, so they've got their the store there and then the post office and then you'll see back here the water tanks at that time the water was uh, for the community was coming out of water tanks right before my parents moved or uh, about the time they moved um, they the water tank was there because of the railroad so when the um, steam engines were gone and the railroads didn't need water tanks, they pulled that out and the community had to start digging wells. And my parents, I was told, were one of the first um, houses to dig their well there. This particular little picture came about um, a friend of a lady who knew my mother. Um, um, had this letter from the gal that wrote it, and she had included this picture. Her family had lived there at one point, and I'll get to that um, later in the slideshow. Um, but it was just a, a neat little historic photo. Um, this lady shared the letter and the photo with my mother, so we were able to... to Do you know the date on that, just judging by the gas pump, I guess in the 20s or something? I believe like 1927. Okay. Just date based on what this lady says. And I've got some copies of that. Um, maybe I can start sharing those around. I've only got three or four, four copies of it. So, And we'll put one in our vertical files, too. Okay. If anybody so wants to follow up sometime. If they want. Um, okay. We can share. Okay. And then before we get started, I'll also pass out um, copies of this poem, which is called the days of 89 and it was a poem that was found written by a, a gentleman who lived in the Silver Bowl in um, 1889. It's kind of fun. So the reason I did my brief history on both Silver Bowl and Missler was that originally the town site of Silver Bowl was at what we now know of as Missler. So the whole area is kind of tied together. In case you're not real familiar, um, here we are coming out on the interstate to, to Ramsey, Missoula. Um, this is the, the interstate coming down to Dillon. Right here is, is the community of Missler, and there's, there's more houses along in here. But this right here is the um, Missler Brewery. And you can see that from the interstate. Is that that little stone, the house? stone house? Yeah. Exactly. And that is what is believed to be um, Christian Missler's Brewery Building. Um, so this here is the original community of, of Silver Bow, or the current community of Silver Bow. Originally it was actually um, more in the Missler area. It was moved in um, 1881 to um, tie into the UC track coming up out of Falls. So was the brewery there first? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, right here, what we have currently is uh, the Port of Montana. This is a current photo, by the way. This is uh, Google Maps. So we have the Port of Montana there. When we were children, there was a block plant, a cinder block plant that operated out there right off to the side here. Um, actually, right under here, was our community dumb. So interesting. And when you said they moved them, did they actually pick up the houses and 
trans transport them to? Um, actually, in, in that time frame, that happened a lot between both communities, as as gold strikes would beef up in Silver Bow. The miners, the, the miners would all head there. As soon as the strike hit closer to Butte or in Burlington, they literally would dismantle their wooden houses because wood was valuable, throw it on the wagon, move it into the next gold strike, and, hmm. and remake their homes. So those buildings went back and forth. And if you go out to the old town site of, of Burlington, you see a lot of foundations, but you won't find any um, or much in the way of, of the actual buildings because Burlington was literally picked up and moved into Butte. And, and this was, was pretty much the same way. So by the time they moved it down, down here in, in 1881, um, there really wasn't much left of the, the gold that played out and silver and um, all the mining was, was happening in Butte. So there wasn't much left here by then. You know, they, they said they got the first gold right there, they got that. Yes. Okay. Where would that be located at? Um, I'll show, I've got that on the slide. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. And so, that was all plaster mining, right? That was all plaster mining. All plaster, all together, yeah. Right? And then um, down here is what was uh, the Victor Chemical Company, then Ron Blank, then Rodia, and then... Solvay. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and then so down here you've got Rick Jones Way that goes down to um, FedEx. I think this is another trucking place. You've got FedEx out here, and then you've got RECC Silicon. Um, this that you can see right here is the drive-in. So that gives you kind of a, a layout of the land. Um, one thing to note, right, this is, is old Highway 10 or, or Highway 1. So this was, um, when we were kids, it was concrete. Um, and had then paved it after that. But that was the original highway that went all the way through. Um, and in this area right here is um, the foundation that is said to be the Silver Bowl School. We've never found any documentation to actually verify that, but you can find the foundation there. And then there is, um, here at Silver Bow, when you come in, um, the store and post office that we grew up in is right here. The depots were right here. And then there is an old foundation of an original depot further back. And that foundation still exists as well. To a railroad, railroad depot? Railroad depots, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you. Usually the UP. The, the bigger one was the UP depot. Okay. So this is the, the monument that you're speaking of. Um, this is just past Nestler on the way to Silver Bowl on that old highway. Yeah, it's a DAR memorial. Correct. DAR Correct. The, the DAR um, put that in in... I think you can see the date there. It's like 2000 just, something. Just updated it a few yeah, years ago. Right. Yeah. When it, that monument had been there years ago <laughs> yeah. um, and then had been um, vandalized. It was stolen. Um, so when, when I was a kid, all that was there was, was basically these rocks down here. And we always knew there was a monument there, but it was gone. Um, so the DAR came back <clears throat> in a few years ago and put that in, which, and it's beautiful. Um, so gold was discovered near this site in 1864 um, by the party of Barker, Barker and Party, which was Slater, Ruff, and others is, is what we come up with. Um, the names out of the, um, the K. Ross tool, an uncommon land, he says it was um, Barker, William Allison, Joseph and James Elser, or Heister, and um, Barker was either Barker or Baker, so the, the names are a little, um, you know, how old records are. They're not always quite, they, they change from record to record. Um, uh, K. Ross Tools says that the naming of the Silver Bowl was done by Pete McMahon. Um, that I've also found another reference to the naming of the, the actual Silver Bowl. So it was first settled in 1864, 
The first territorial legislature named Silver Bow to be the county seat for the huge Deer Lodge County, which encompassed what is now Powell, Deer Lodge, and Silver Bow counties. The Honorable L.P. Williston presided at the first judicial proceeding in the county at Silver Bow on July 10, 1865, so a year after uh, gold was first discovered. But the first election followed swiftly thereafter, and on September 1, 1865, the voters picked Spanish Forks, or Deer Lodge, for their seat of government. In K. Ross Cole's book, he says that in early 1865, a commission which included Granville Stewart was <coughs> instructed to lay out the town site of Silver Bow, which by the middle of February contained 40 to 50 houses. Later in that year, with a population of 1,000, the camp was designated the first seat of Deer Lodge County. There in July, the first court session was held. The construction of the courthouse was soon to begin, but before its completion, J.F. Beck lo loaded all the records in his wagon, and when questioned as to what he was doing, replied he was moving the county seat to Deer Lodge Village. <laughs> <laughs> so, is, that, is that Beck, the Beck from Deer Lodge that are still there? The I believe so. I would think so too, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the rich gold placers were discovered in October of 1864, a total production of gold probably less than a million dollars, and the least pure placer gold found in Montana. So um, it, it was gold, but it, it wasn't terribly pure, and played out very quickly. Um, obviously, when I gave this class this before, it was um, <laughs> the guys in the class, their focus was gold and ore and how much production and what kind of equipment and I wanted to know about the people. So, <laughs> so it says rich gold placers were discovered on Silver Bow Creek below the present village of Silver Bow in October of 1864. The discovery party comprised of Frank Rock, Bud Baker, or, uh, Peter Slatter and others. So you can see that the names get kind of uh, mixed up between the two accounts. Then here we have the naming of Silver Bow Creek, and it says, Captain James S. Mills explains the naming of the creek. Never prettier name was coined, and it came about thus. On the evening of a cloudy day in January, 1864, Bud Barker, P. Allison, Joe, and Jim Esther, on a prospecting trip, reached the vicinity of the creek near Butte, and a discussion arose as to its name. As the argument went on, the clouds rolled over the sun, a bright Lance fell on the water sweeping in a graceful curve around the base of the mountains, burnishing them to a brilliancy, brilliancy as they clasped and veil in the bowl like silver. So supposedly that's where the name comes from. Again, there's no <coughs> accounts on, on where that name comes from. So growing up, my mother would tell us this was the bowl. <laughs> so this is the mountain. Um, uh, the brewery would be right here, the interstate running along here, Silver Bowl is, would be down here, this little mountain here is called Hulahan Mountain, and um, she would tell us that was actually the Silver Bowl. So we have to imagine that with, um, with a lot more vegetation, uh, a beautiful green blue stream, and no power poles. <laughs> still in January. Right. <laughs> yeah. so right. And that's in January of 1864 when they say that gold was actually discovered in yeah. October, but apparently these men were there on a prospecting trip before that. Oh, okay. I got a couple questions about this picture. I'm real familiar because I ride my bicycle along what I believe is the old Milwaukee right of way. Right. Okay, the Northern Pacific is on the south side of the creek. Then this is the Butte and Anaconda Pacific tracks that are still there and, and are sort of. Uh, the the bicycle trails, the old Milwaukee, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Uh -huh. Okay, so that's number one question. Then, over there, you can see it in the picture, there is an old hard rock mine. Yes. Right there. And yes, so, there's the added there, and then the, there's... Uh, yeah. yeah. Was that mine when you were a kid, or was that long gone? Um, when we were a kid, there was, um, there was some renegade boys in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> we might have been our brothers, we're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And at one point, they found dynamite uh, stored up here. Oh my uh, the man, there was a man who lived um, up on the other side over here is the Eulin branches. Um, there was a man that lived up there, and he would come down and, and, uh, and gold pan right along in here. Um, and I was always told that, that this was his mountain. Um, the name of the mountain is, is Helahan. I don't know um, if that was the same man. But this was, I, was old and dilapidated thing. I've got a better picture of that, too, that attic. So um, I thought this was interesting. This talks about uh, that W.R. W. Cogswell um, as the recorder. Um, but what came out of all the mining there was the, the development of the Summit Mountain Mining District um, out of the original uh, placer mines at, at Silver Bowl. And then from there, um, other mining districts came up. Um, they moved into German Gulch. Um, but the interesting thing here is in 1919, we renamed German Gulch to Persian Gulch. Hmm. And as it says in the article, it says it was called German Gulch in the days before the Kaiser, Kaiser's egotism went on a spree in 1919. Um, so this article here was, was talking about um, a group of Boy Scouts who were going to get, go on a, a Boy Scout camp um, up German Gulch. Um, but at that point, we were calling it Persian Gulch. So, but I don't believe the same thing happened in World War II, unless somebody knows I couldn't find um, where it had been, or when it got renamed back. So this um, is a, a very old photo of what was supposed to be the um, Silver Bow Village. This would have been as it was located at Nestler, but I can't figure out quite where all that would have been. But um, uh, my brother, did a lot of um, a lot of genealogy research and a lot of historical research, and he was gathering things um, left and right. Um, he passed away a few years ago, and a lot of this was in his documents that he had. So that's where a lot of this stuff came for, from, to me from. Um, at this time, the prosperity was universal. Everybody was employed, and wages were six to seven dollars a day. A decline in the mining activity began in this vicinity in 1870. Even with the revival in 1874, uh, 75, it did not strike the village. And by 1880, there was no mention of the, the uh, camp of Silver Bow in the uh, census. I, in um, K. Ross Tool's book, he says that um, the two camps, Butte and Silver Bow, were seven miles apart, were rivals from the start. Both depended on the classers for their prosperity, and whichever camp produced the most gold boasted the larger population. When pay dirt ran thin in one camp, the miners hauled, hustled to the other diggings, tearing down their cabins and shacks and rebuilding them in the more prosperous settlement. The following year, the process might be reversed. Hmm. So I think there were many years there where, where the miners just picked up and moved wherever the gold was. So in 1881, it was transplanted from the, um, the, the entire community of, of Silver Bow was transplanted from its original location um, at Nestler down to where it currently is. Um, and the, the <coughs> reason for that was the, um, the UP, the Utah Northern, was coming up from uh, Idaho Falls. And that was the, the, the track you can see in the original, or the, aerial photo. Um, there was a hotel run in the area by a man named Stoltz. And when you read that poem, The Days of 89, you'll see reference to all of these people in there. There was a boarding house by Mrs. White. There was um, several saloons. Uh, the one mentioned in The Days of 89, the one was run by Felix O'Neill. And then he also had a store and post office. Um, <coughs> and there's one article that states that, um, that uh, Schlepping drinks was his main priority, and the male might take second or third. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, second saloon um, was run by a man named Jacobs. Um, in, in one of the uh, old newspaper articles, it states that he was 
a Jewish man, but served Jews and Gentiles alike. So, hmm. um, it's interesting to read the old newspaper articles and see how how differently they can word things. Word, word things there. Segregation. Yeah. yeah. Um, in 1951, the Victor Chemical Company uh, was built out there to produce phosphorus. Um, then it became Stocker, Ron Polank, on and on. Um, and then the block plant ran out there in the 1950s, and I showed you the location of that. One of the last drive-in theaters in Montana um, is, operates out there. It was opened in 1977 and is still in operation with two screens. That was and really it's late. The site of the Port of Montana, REC. Seacast uh, and Fax. So this, um, the brewery that we saw, the stone building, it says Chris Nisler, the one article was July 10th, 1883, said he was doing a business which doth exhilarate but does not Inebriate. Does that mean he watered down the beer? <laughs> 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 right yeah. Business in amber beverage, which does exhilarate but not inebriate. <laughs> <laughs> Light beer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in this article, it says that he reopened the Silver Bowl Brewery Depot on Main Street, um, but I, I, I think he, they mean Main Street in Butte. I think at some point he moved the. the um, Brewery to Butte and then back, but um, we can never get that to be terribly clear. And then um, my brother would, he also would find um, in his gatherings, he liked to find death notices and um, just tried to track people and, and um, connections. Um, so I have a lot of the death notices of, of Chris Nistler and, and different um, people from, from the Silver Bowl area, but it, it's kind of interesting because uh, they generally list um, survivors, and then you can start tracking people that way. This is a is the old stone building, the, the brewery. Um, it's in much better condition today. Uh, it's privately owned, and they've taken wonderful care of it. Um, but this was a newspaper article probably from the 70s, and then I had it in my scrapbook. Is that a German brewery then? Yes. There's an article in the uh, Montana Magazine thing about, about the brewery there that they were comparing the Virginia City brewery and how this brewery here and that there's documentation up in Helen that says that the people in, in uh, German Gulch were German in, in this litter, that they actually were drinking beer before the things in City. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a few, few. Uh, huh. Well, that's yeah. That's he. You know, it looks like it was one of the first things established was future breweries. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this yeah. is the brewery today, and you'll see that um, that it, it's actually a really cool building. I've been in it once, years and years and years ago, when it was a private residence. They say downstairs um, is still the, uh, you know, the arched. Um, ceilings at, uh, all in, in oak for the oak casts and stuff. Mm -hmm. These are pretty cool. Is this still a private residence? Yes. Yeah. So this, um, the poem that I sent around, that Days of 89, this is actually the original of that. Um, the other, I photocopied one. Um, the last page is so fragile that um, you can't even really open it up. Um, but this, but somehow my mother got a hold of it. So people would just give her a lot of these things being the postmaster, and um, which I guess I didn't explain to you all. My mother and father moved out there in 1954. They bought the store and post office. But they bought the store. My mother became postmaster. Um, so that's why we grew up out there. But um, it's, it's a pretty cool little poem, and it talks about a, a, a lot of the names that, that, um, that my brother would go and, and track these people down, the Stoltz and, and uh, Chris Nistler and Dutton is one of the names. Mm -hmm. One of the postmasters was 
this Felix O'Neill, he was also the saloon owner. Um, he shot and killed himself in um, this article in 1904. Um, there were some, some other well-known silver bowl. Um, this Spires uh, was, had a ranch out there. Um, let's see, Spires and Dudden. Uh, Dudden's had a ranch out there as well. Um, if you look currently at the um, mining claim boundaries out there from Rocker um, down to Silver Row, and that's, I, I end up doing that for work purposes, but um, there's actually several of the mining claims that are called the Spires, Spires and Bauer um, mining claims, and that's this fellow right here. So I th this one was interesting. This is, is Ben Dutton. He um, dies of smallpox when he was 18 or 19 years old in 1899. And the article actually says he was a robust, strong man who should have been able to resist this terrible disease, but he, he passes away. This Ben Dutton then appeared, it, it appears to be young Ben Dutton's um, father. And then this, this Mrs. Angela Dutton, who also lived out there, they had a ranch. But the interesting thing for me is um, uh, she, was, she had the three brothers, Tony, Rudy, and Charles Scubitz. The Scubitz Ranch, yeah, I knew you were going to catch on. The Scubitz Ranch um, was a big ranch in uh, German Gulch as we were growing up. And the two brothers, Tony and Rudy, um, were old. Um, They've never married. Bachelor. Just two, two old bachelors living up there. Um, and uh, a German name again, though? Is that a German no. name? Scubitz, yeah. Uh, oh, exactly. Name. Yeah. So, as my mother was getting ready to retire, um, she asked for a listing of the um, post, postmasters um, from, from Silver Bowl. <coughs> So this actually comes from the, the post office department. Um, but here's the listings of, of all the, the postmasters. So the first one was this William Dorchester in 1881. And the last one is um, Dorothy Jansen. Um, and she retires in 18, or 1982. So it was established in 1881, closed in August of 18, 1982, after 101 years of operation. The post office was established three years before Montana becomes a territory and eight years before it became a state. So the Silver Bowl Post Office was actually a territorial post office uh, that established before statehood. So uh, my parents bought, bought the store and then my mother, um, her comment in one of the newspaper articles was she became post, she applied for the job and got it, although she, she was pretty sure she was the only one that applied. And that was 54? In 54, and yeah. they bought it from Mrs. Emma Benz. Um, and then you know, the, 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 the other building that we had seen, that was the, this Theodore Klassen. Um, there's his wife, Anna Klassen. And then you'll see this Agnes. I think it's Iverson. Um, that's the mother of the lady who wrote the, the little um, article. So as early as what, 1914, women could be postmasters? And, and, and the majority of the postmasters were women. Mm -hmm. Were they? Yeah, yeah. And that, it's interesting, when people find out my mother was postmaster, um, they often refer to her as a postmistress. And, um, and they did that when she was alive. And, and it was incorrect. She was a postmaster, and her comment was always, "I was nobody's mistress." Hmm. <laughs> so she was postmaster. So here's that little um, store again, the store and post office. It was purchased by John and Agnes Pearson um, after the postmaster Theodore Classen was shot and killed in the attempted robbery. Classen was Agnes's uncle. So um, Klassen was, was shot and killed in mm. a robbery. That's this article here. Um, he tried to 
to stop the would-be robber, um, who it says right here, would-be robber Mexican. Um, again, interesting <laughs> articles there. Uh, but they said the, he was a 200-pound man and thought he could overtake the shabbily uh, small man, shabbily dressed small man, trying to rob him, but um, he was shot and killed. And then his wife takes over as postmaster and then um, uh, this, the um, niece and her husband buy the, the place, and you'll see there, then they changed it to Pearson, I think you can see on there. And so that was the original post office before it moved across the street to your place? It was one of the original post offices. There yeah. would have been another one down by Missler, and, and there, we don't know. And then the um, town moved out by the uh, UP right. Junction. And right, right, and that's where you're seeing those water right. tanks there, right. and those foundations are still there. Right. And then the depots over on this corner. <clears throat> when we were kids, you could see that this had all been burned out, and there was still a foundation there, um, but the, the buildings had been long gone. So there's a trailer there now. So yes. So what? So yes, down, so down the hill a little bit. This is actually, I mean, they, they were so close to right the track there. Yeah. They, and then on this side over here was a bar, the Silver Bowl bar. Um, it was, that building was still there when we were kids. So, um, and that's a vacant land right to the south of your house, right? Right. That used to be a bar right there. Right. Almost a, right, right up to the railroad tracks. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my <coughs> mother um, had, she, it's in one of the other articles as well, but um, she had always heard this story about a postmaster having been shot and killed um, and never had any real detail on it, never knew if it was true. And um, in the, I guess it would have been in the 70s, our brother was up in Alaska um, working the, the pipeline and um, came across an article on a wall in the Anchorage airport where they had like old newspapers as part of the uh, display and he was waiting for the plane and he's just browsing through and he found the article that was um, this man shot and killed. So we knew then it was true and then, um, so he searched for the article here because we actually had a name by then. So this was um, the art house growing up. This was the Silver Oak store and post office um, in 1954 when they bought it. Um, the store was this front part, and the post office was actually in this back corner. Uh, the rest of the building was residence. Um, there was also a gas pump there. It was purchased by my parents, Bill and Dorothy Mazur, in 1954. Dorothy became the 22nd and the last postmaster of Silver Bowl, Montana. Zip code for Silver Bowl was 59750. So is the bar just the left of the car? Right. Okay. Right, we had a shared driveway right here, and there was the bar that also had a, a residence attached to it as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in 1881, the Utah Northern Narrow Gauge Railroad reached Silver Bow. This is the first road to enter the confines of the territory. The hopes of Butte are built upon it. So bringing that, that connection up from um, from Idaho, from Utah, um, and then from the UP line coming in, then there was the, the Milwaukee and um, the other line going back into Butte. So that's where the connection was made. Which is, of course, that, um, that north-south, east-west um, connection that is also the reason the Port of Montana is located there, um, just on a highway instead of a railroad track. There were two big floods um, in our past, both Butte and Silver Bow, um, that affected, of course, the mine tailings. Um, the first one was the, uh, this flood of 1908. I've just pulled out a few little tidbits here. Um, at the Silver Bow Creek at the foot of Montana Street was almost mm. a mile wide. Wow. Milwaukee grade and um, under construction wiped out almost an entire was wiped out almost the entire distance between Butte and Missoula. So the Milwaukee grade was just being built um, in 1908, and it, it basically um, it started over. What time of year? Pardon me? What time of year? It would have been in the spring. Um, every bridge over mm. the creek between Butte and Anaconda was gone. 
the Northern Pacific was unable to get to Butte for nearly two weeks, and the Higgins Avenue Bridge in Missoula was carried away. Wow. And damage from this flood went all the way to Spokane. Just make another good grab bag just on the flood. Oh <laughs> that, was, that was a bad flood. So then in 1943, we flood again. Um, the concrete bridge at the town of Silver Bow washes out. The BAP span was torn from its moorings. They were just building a, a BAP span, um, and that was completely torn off the moorings. And this bridge, I think, is is the bridge that, that is now there, because it says going into the town of Silver Bow. By this point, Silver Bow would be located where it's currently at. And that bridge was just replaced four or five years ago. So the bridge, at the, and uh, if you walk up the Milwaukee Bridge in the east, there's that little concrete bridge mm -hmm. uh, before you get by 15. What bridge was that when you were a kid? You know, it sits there. What was that? When, uh, you were... when you're closer to the brewery? It, uh, yes, right, yeah. Okay. I've got a picture got of that. Yeah. Good, thank you. Just um, some more here on the, uh, the, the floods. Um, it takes out the NP Bridge at Durant Canyon. Um, and you just kind of keep that in mind as we look at um, the damage that, 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 that those floods did. That's where all the um, sediment tailings ends up in the, um, mm. the wash of the creek. So my brother was also um, really interested in um, kind of some bizarre things, but in... <laughs> Silverbow seems to be a dangerous place to live. We're such a tiny little town. <laughs> this one, as we were growing up, um, this man here was the section foreman, and um, uh, he and his wife were just sweet, sweet wonder. Actually, that's my uncle. Uh, exactly. I was going to say, actually, his wife was, yeah, uh, which we found out after, after I married into the family. Um, and, and Lawrence was the one that, that found his section foreman did show up for work in the morning. He went, there were, was railroad housing there then, that the men actually lived right there, and um, found that this Paul Paulus had been murdered in his bunkhouse um, overnight. <clears throat> when we were growing up, um, my mother always spoke of, Paul Paulus and the murder and um, and Lawrence having found him and how Lawrence was never quite the same after that. It affected him greatly. Um, but it, I think it was was pretty frightening for that little community to have such a brutal murder right yeah. there. And then if you look at the date, um, uh, August of 1959, we're like three weeks after um, the earthquake. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, 1959 <laughs> He had gotten paid, hopped the train into town, went to the bars, um, probably was flashing a wad of cash after having cashed his paycheck. Um, and they, they think somebody followed him back. Um, he also had been wearing a, a large diamond ring, and his finger was cut off in the, oh. and the ring. Was, oh. So it was very brutal. Oh. Mm. Yeah. That really must have affected everybody that was with him. Yeah, yeah. It was just a, quiet little community at that point. In 1951, Victor Chemical builds the furnace plant, and so that was, uh, you know, bringing industry and jobs back to the area, um, and there were a lot of, a lot of good paying jobs there for, for a very long time. Um, in 1955 and 56, the company actually built the road um, that now is the road going up to German Gulch, and uh, I'll show you why when we look at some another aerial photograph. This was an article that came uh, out in the, sta the Standard every so often would, would just send a, a reporter out and they would do like a Sunday edition. Um, so my mother would end up in the paper every so often. <laughs> 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 um, I would little articles and this was one of them. 
So this is the UP track that comes up from um, Idaho Falls. And then there's the other tracks coming back through here that um, they're actually, at one point, was the stockyard back here where the, the cattle would be loaded on the trains going, um, coming up from one area and, and heading out the other direction. This is the UP depot. Um, that building is no longer there. And then this right here is um, our store and post office. This building has just been taken yeah. down. Just torn down, like in the last mm -hmm. two months or so. Right, and it will, this area, that spot right there, the reason it was uh, torn down is that will become the trailhead yeah. <coughs> for the um, oh, Greenway Trailhead. That's cool. So at the bur where the brewery is, <laughs> the brewery is right here. Um, there were, when we were children, there were two other bars here. The, the brewery by that point was just a, a private residence. There was the Leaky Roof Tavern, and then here was the Highway Tavern. And I don't know if any of you um, remember those bars, uh, but the Highway Tavern during the, the 70s, um, uh, Bob Jameson, who ran the Highway Tavern, had cut a record, and um, he got to know some of the people on the Hee Haw Show and started having them come up. And so um, I, I would spend weekends there with my girlfriend, because then we'd get to sneak in and look in the bar. Um, when people like Roy Clark and Buck Owens were playing actually on the highway tavern. Hmm. That's the bridge that just was torn down, right? Uh, the, uh, the, the other bridge is right here. No, I'm talking about the, the uh, German Gulf in the background of that photo right there. Isn't that the bridge that just got torn down? That's the interstate. No, this is the yeah, interstate, interstate right here. Oh, okay. The other side of this is that wetlands right by um, Wolves Place. The, um, oh, okay. Right that's looking east, and I see the east. Okay, that's the interstate bridge. And this okay. is Boomer the Wonder Dog. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, oh, Boomer. <laughs> this was just another little article. Um, a lot of it is taken from that poem, the Days of '89, um, that had run in the in the newspaper at one point. Um, the fun thing here is this is the um, Silver Bow Depot. Um, you'll see this little corner here. Well, one of the trains derailed one morning, and it ended up here. Hmm. So it took out that corner of the building, and um, that was their repair. And it stayed that way for years. It just fly right up. When we were, um, when my mother first went out there, and when, when even when I was still a child, um, our mail came by train twice a day. Um, so it came out on the, the train, and then outgoing mail got picked up by train. And so we had the mail came in um, a big canvas bag with a leather strap and a um, padlock. And then um, we took the mail bags up to the depot. The depot men had the big long claw, and they would pick up the, the incoming mail off of one end of the train and send out the outgoing mail off the other end of the train. So um, that was kind of our job as kids was, fun thing was to drag the mail bag up to the depot. Otherwise, it was and which, the depot mail would come get it. Milwaukee, which, which line was on? Or both? Both. Both. Did it stop? And it did stop um, probably in the 60s. I'm going to say before. I think I went to school in 65. Um, it was probably about that time. And then our, our mail started coming by truck. Um, mm -hmm. So it was delivered on a, a route. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine mail twice a day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was actually enough mail to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is part of that, that other article. Um, and this is my mother. Um, there, the, this is where she talks a lot about, I think I was the only one that, that applied, and um, uh, just kind of life in Silver Bowl was nice and quiet. So what's, what's the date on that article? I think it was 1977, or 71. 71, that was 71. the So you can again see, there's the depot building. Um, these, the, these buildings back here, the all these white, those were the railroad um, owned housing. Um, so that would have been where Lawrence lived, um, uh, the 
house that, that um, the, the bunk house that, that Paul Paulus was killed in. Um, when we were children, uh, the um, Lawrence Garrity lived there, and there was um, a family, the Aldous family, um, they were both uh, section foremen, I believe, that lived there, and a couple of the other buildings then were empty. Those are all gone now. They've all been dismantled. Was the AP still running out there? Mm-hmm. Then? In yeah. 71, they, they probably stopped in 72. I think so. Stopped. So the Mud Hunt of Standard used to run this um, thing on Sundays, if any of you remember, and they would take a, a snapshot somewhere mm -hmm. and ask, where have we been? Mm -hmm. And the week that they did this, this other article, this was the where have we been. Um, so this is the road coming into Silver Bow from the old highway. This is the bridge that I believe was the one that would have washed out in 43 and then rebuilt. So the new trail. Um, the Greenway Trail is starting right here and heading out to Ramsey, <coughs> and the rest of it is still yet to be constructed. So this is the um, original store post office. This little building back here is where my grandparents lived. Um, those are those uh, UP housing up here. You can just see right here, that's the, um, the bar, the Silver Bowl bar, and then up here is the depot. Your grandparents lived up there? They did. Well, now, how long were they there? They, after my parents moved from 2nd okay. Street, um, that my grandparents were still in town, okay. and then um, Failing oh. Health, whatever, they moved them up there. The, the crossing across the tracks in this picture looks better than it is today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you've heard up there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the article that ran um, announcing that the Silver Bowl Post Office would close. Um, a lot of the same information that I've already given you that it was in operation for 101 years. Um, this is, unfortunately I had a flood at my house and this one got damaged, but um, on the last day of uh, the Silver Bowl Post Office would be the last day you could ever get um, a postmark from 59750. So my mother um, had postmarked for all of us, you'll see she, she signed one for everybody. Mm. I think us kids got ones with the Montana state stamp on them. I know my husband's has just some other stamp. So the, <laughs> the, <laughs> my husband's got, got the Montana stamps and, and the husband. I don't know, Donna, what's yours? Do you know? <laughs> but I remember when, um, when it was announced that, that she was closing, a lot of you know stamp collectors and post, there's a lot of postmark collectors um, mm. So she started like two months before, she was getting a ton of mail asking for last day postmarks. So she actually had to start postmarking like weeks ahead. She just sat <laughs> for and the last day. <laughs> and then saved them um, and then mailed them all on the 31st. She also would get post, um, mm. letters at Christmas time. Um, there were people that would collect Christmas themed names, mm. postmarks. And because of the silver bow, she mm. would get uh, uh, all these requests at Christmas time hmm. for a silver bow postmark. How many people receive mail there? Um, I think it says in the article, but probably about, she had between 50 and 60 at, at different times. They're all of, of German Gulch, all of um, Ramsey itself has, has its own, and still does, have a post office. It's 59748 is the zip code, um, and it, but it only did Ramsey, and uh, most of the others came to the Silver Bowl Post Office, and one of the reasons was a lot of the men worked at Stauffer and would come through the road, and it was easier for them to pick up their mail there on the way home. That was a lot of, uh, like, um, in, um, just past Ramsey, if they lived there, um, a lot of them would still got their mail at Silver Bowl. A lot of, there were a lot of um, places up in, in German Gulch and um, that you didn't realize how many ranches and, and how many residents were actually up there. There were, there were quite a few. She had a lot of, of, of really interesting little characters. She had a, a man, his name was Idy. Remember Idy? Um, 
and he was an old bachelor that lived way up in the hills, and often he would get snowed in. Um, and so she was always checking on him when, if he didn't contact her at a, a certain time, um, and he would get snowed in, and he, but he was always worried about paying his bills. So he would have her cash his, his Social Security check in the post office, open up his bills, write out his money orders oh, wow. to get his bills out on time because he would, would worry about that. That's pretty trusting. Yeah. <laughs> and um, at one, uh, one winter, um, she hadn't heard from him on time and, uh, and sent the sheriff out after him, and he had passed away. So, um, we used to get chickens early in the morning. Um, when the, the, in the spring, the ranchers would get their new uh, batch of chickens in and they would come in crates, and so the, they'd get delivered at 6 in the morning and you would hear <laughs> chickens and little, little baby chicks. So this is a picture of what, is, what was the Henry Station. It was a, a gas station and, and restaurant. This would be on the other side of, this would be the interstate, the I-15 going to Dillon. Um, the brewery would be here. This is that curve in the road, if you drive out that old highway. Um, and this was a, a restaurant and bar um, still operating. When I, I don't remember, but my brother did. Um, so this is that bridge you were talking about here, correct? Uh, yes, right. But, yeah. okay. and I can, I'll show you better on an aerial photo. But you've got the old highway coming through here. And actually, before they put in the interstate on this old aerial photo, you'll see that that old highway actually kind of went straight through here. For whatever reason, when they did the bridge to come across the, um, the creek and the railroad tracks, they had to route that road kind of in this big S shape. But then there was another road that came across here, went up around Helahan Mountain, Came into Silver Bowl that way. That's another bridge. Right. Jameson's had the highway tavern, and the leaky roof was next door. Oh, next door. And they were right next door. And then, of course, there was two bars in Rocker, so we weren't dry. <laughs> this is that mine added on on Hilahan. still there, and there you'll see it again. And then there's there's actually a, um, a little opening in the rocks right up here, and that's where those renegade boys had found dynamite at, at one point. You said so they found it, did they explode it? No, no, my mother exploded. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, I had given this originally for a, a, a mining type thing, but um, you'll see evidence of the hydraulic mining there. <clears throat> and these are just cuts, right? Um, this one is, is on the side of that mountain. And then there's some on the other side of that road as well. You'll see that. Um, and the, the dirt right there is real red. You've ever noticed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, OK, so since you work in Pioneer, you probably only answer this question. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the trail's going to go around the south side of Blueheim Mountain, right? Mm -hmm. No? It's going to go on the north side? Or is it the side of it? It is not decided yet. Okay. There, there's still some, uh, the last I heard, um, the, there's still some um, engineering considerations as to what will, will be the, the easier and better. Um, and, I, and I'll show you that on the, okay. on the aerial. But you're right, there, there's cotton going here, but it's a little bit narrow um, between all the railroad tracks, and then the top of going around the mountain. There again is that that hydraulic mining evidence. This is that old bridge, like I said, um, and, and it was that, you know, you can actually still see the road um, that comes up and around that mountain. And that's, it used to be the, the road into Silver Bowl um, and was the reason uh, Victor Chemical bought or, or built the, um, the, the road now that goes to the chemical plant. Because if you took this road and you came around, you got caught by the UP trains, which often blocked the tracks and the men kept being late for work. So a Victor Chemical built um, the other, the bypass road. 
As I said, there's a, that foundation that is said to be the Silver Bowl Schoolhouse. Do, they, has, do you know, Donna? Because I know you had dates on it, didn't you? We have a picture um, oh, I need that. of the Silver Bowl School. And, but I don't have, I don't know the dates on it. Dates on it, right. And there, there should be dates of when an option would come. Mm -hmm. Donna works for the um, county superintendent. Oh, okay. Okay, I would say the counties. Oh, that's you. Okay, I would say you should give that to the superintendent. They're collecting it. So this is just um, from that that school foundation area. This is looking towards Silver Bowl. There's the Port of Montana there. This is coming down the road across that bridge that we saw in the old photograph. Good idea of where we're at. This is looking at Port of Montana. Port of Montana is 55 acres serving railroads in the trucking industry. And this is the old um, depot foundation, and this still exists out there as well. Um, this is quite a ways back, and it's at kind of that point where the two railroads come together. Um, there also, when we were children, there was um, a stockyard there, and they would, would uh, you know, hold over cattle um, for the next train. So there was a small pan stockyard to hold the cattle. And this is what it looks like now where um, I said there was UP housing out there. And this is all there is. There's some old um, barrels, some old trees. A couple of the houses had beautiful little yards going and all of that is gone. All those, they just tore them all down. So in that uh, photo of the store where you can see the water tanks mm -hmm. off to the side, these are the bases for those water tanks. Um, that still exists as well. This um, little photo of the water pump there is right off the track, but the funding was uh, getting a date of 1913 with the, the St. Paul, Minnesota on it. My brother tells me, <coughs> different brother, not the one that collected all the information, um, that, and I don't remember this, but one of the, the, um, the railroad foremen, the, um, the Aldous, his name was Virg Aldous, his wife would decorate this water pump for the holidays. Mm. <laughs> and so the, the, the road is right here, the train tracks would have been going right here, the depot right here. And she would decorate it as a little Santa, a little snowman, a little <laughs> witch. But she had all these that just for fun. And I don't remember that. I wish I did. Talking about water, where does Silver Bowl get its water anyway? The residents all have wells. Wells, okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we saw that picture, the newspaper article with the, the depot where it had been bashed in. Um, that, building sat here. They now have a, a kind of a prefab building that sits a little further back. And then um, <clears throat> the trailer back here. The original people building is gone. So this was this is just the aerial from, um, like, from 2012. Um, the reason I want to show you this is I want to show you I've got a, an age progression. Um, but you'll see here is the, the road coming in. This was the, the bypass road that um, Victor Chemical actually built. And then it swings around and goes into to Victor Chemical or wrong way. So here's the Port of Montana. It's uh, basically the same photo you saw earlier. It's just a little bit uh, older. It's 2012. And you'll see this same shot, hmm. same exact spot in 1954. So you'll see here, they're just starting to build the interstate, mm -hmm. but the road is actually swings back around here. As they build it, it, it ends up coming back down around here. And then you'll see this is that concrete bridge and the road around. And then would come here, have to wait here at the UP track, and get caught up and go to work. So 
route through the interstate went in, Victor Chemical built the bypass road to, to bypass the UP track. The other thing to note here is, um, is all the white areas. That's all the um, tailings from the floods. So when we were kids, this area was called the Salt Flats. Um, great place to play. <laughs> but that's that's what's showing up there. That's all the um, the mine waste that, that's flooding out from those 1908, 1943 uh, floods. So that explains why all those uh, all the approaches to the new bridge or the old bridge had to be hauled back to the slate pile because Victor used their own slate to make the approaches. This summer you probably knew, but they. I don't know how many hundred million yards or as well, right. Right, the hundreds of thousands that we got hauled back to Slight Power Rodia right. for the um, approaches. For the approaches, okay. For the old and the railroad built all their beds on Slight. Yeah, too. right. Well, yeah. On, on tailings. Yeah, tailings. Yeah. Well, that was that was actually Slight on the furnaces, I think. Okay. The approaches to the old bridge, because yeah. they went back in the Slight Power. It looks just like the same stuff. And that's that's, that's probably was, it, yeah, because yeah, right, they yeah. built the, the road. So this is it in 1956. You'll see um, that we've come a little bit further. We've got the, the road coming in here. You'll see that they stopped using this. It doesn't really show up as well. So that the mountain we were looking at is basically right there. 1977, um, interstate is, is completely there. That road has not been utilized and is, is pretty much grown over. There is, uh, when we were children, there was a road that came along here, and there was a bridge right here um, over a nice, uh, that, this is Sand Creek, um, a nice little creek area right there that we played in a lot as kids. Um, we didn't get to play in this as much. But this bridge burned down um, somewhere along the line. But this used to flood when we were children. This whole area would, would um, flood and, and the water coming down out of Sand Creek would just be raging um, right below behind that uh, that area where that the would, that would be south of Silver Crypton, the Sand Creek. Yes. And so it would flow north. Right. Okay, so here's the, the road going in. You can see here um, this is before, uh, before basically anything of the Port of Montana and nothing there. Again, you can see the, the tailings. So this is Silver Oak Creek today. Um, this is the area that it, in the photos we're seeing it's all uh, white. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a, a summer picture um, because it, it's really pretty amazing how nice and green this is. And then this is the um, Greenway Trail coming right off the bridge. The Silver Oak Bridge is right here. And that's it. Mm -hmm. and See that um, 